أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is now the third week of the month of Dhul Hijjah and we're coming close towards the end of this month but as we continue with these last few sessions let us again reflect on the traditions of the Prophet and his noble family about the importance of Hajj of the importance of the sacred land of Mecca and the importance which Allah has given to this house of his and today in the tradition which we want to reflect upon from again the fifth Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baqir may God's peace and blessings be upon him he reminds us of the importance of ensuring that our acts of worship are done with permissible means with permissible wealth in, in particular and this obviously is a topic which is vast and has many aspects which will reflect a few on a few of them after we review this hadith. But what does the fifth Imam tell us in terms of how we can ensure our Hajj is accepted or how even generally speaking we can ensure all of our acts of worship are done appropriately and with the correct formulas in place. The fifth Imam tells us the following. Allah, the noble and grand, shall not accept the Hajj or Umrah of a person who performs them using illicit wealth. The fifth Imam is clear in this tradition, as are many of the other traditions that we have from the family of the Prophet, that when it comes to our acts of worship, the acts of goodness towards Allah, that we have to ensure that they are done in a particular way and using particular means at our disposal. And with the most important uh, quality or criteria that we have to ensure is that our wealth is acquired from permissible means. And we know that this is a large discussion, no doubt. How do we earn permissible income? Well, generally speaking, there are a few things that we have to keep in mind. One, obviously, is that if we have embarked on a career, we have gone to university, we've done some post-secondary education, and we have now embarked upon a career working for a company, we need to ensure that our work that we're doing for this company is permissible, that they are themselves are not having us perform actions within our career, within our job description, which would be impermissible. Engaging in many illicit forms of uh, business, of trade, of, of work, because this would have the potential to render our income illicit. And were we to perform Hajj or Umrah or Ziyarat or any of our acts of worship with such wealth, there is a very strong possibility that those acts of worship would not be accepted by Allah. There is a very strong possibility that those acts would be rendered null and void. And similar is the case if we open our own business. Before we embark on that, we need to ensure that we have done proper investigation, that we will not be engaging in the purchasing or the selling of products which are deemed impermissible according to Islam. And the list is obviously uh, varied. It's not a hard and fast list. We have to refer to our scholars, the Maraja Taqlid that we follow, to see what they say are permissible and impermissible forms of business and commerce and dealings. And once we have read the rules and we are sure that we are comfortable, then we should go forth for business or then we should go forth for our further education and a career path in life. And so as we close, we have to remind ourselves that not only for the Hajj and the Umrah, but for our daily prayers, for any act of worship, we have to ensure that our wealth in which we uh, are working on a, on a day to day basis and we're using that wealth in some form or another within our worship, whether it be the clothing that we wear at the prayers or the, you know, the airline tickets that we pr purchase to go for the Hajj or the Umrah or the Ziyarat, we have to ensure that all of these are performed or purchased rather from permissible sources that they are from permissible wealth and then we don't allow our wealth to be tainted with the impermissible, with the forbidden, with that which Allah has asked us to keep away from. We close and we ask Allah to again allow those of our brothers and sisters and family members who have been uh, embarking on the Hajj and the Ziyarat of the grave of the Prophet and his family and the noble companions that Allah allows each and every one of them to return back home safely. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.